Welcome to the Simpler Business Podcast, where we talk about ways to do what you love and serve your people in a way that brings you income and freedom. I'm your host, Marissa Roberts. Join me as I chat with my favorite entrepreneurs about how they simplify their biz so that you can simplify yours. As small business owners, whether we are content creators, service providers, or coaches, we often shy away from actively selling. I don't want to be pushy. What if they don't like it? I'm not a natural salesperson. I don't know enough about my topic yet. Rejection feels personal. (sighs) Any of these sound familiar? I'm too busy. I don't know what to sell. I don't know how to price it or how to get it in front of the people who want to buy it. Hmm. It's really interesting how so many of us have the same blocks. And yet when I speak to my entrepreneurial buddies who are doing really well, they all say the same thing. They had those fears and blocks too, but they still took action. Business for me is really about two things, delivering a high quality experience for my customers and staying on top of my mindset. Actually, mindset really is my first focus these days because before I had that in place, I would procrastinate, lose focus and miss out on opportunities and sales. After 12 plus years in the online business world, I know what to include in an offer that makes it an easy yes for buyers, and I know how to set up my system so that those offers sell themselves. That takes so much pressure off me. I can keep myself in a positive mindset and focus on the parts of the business that I love, which for me is creating content that feels like I'm documenting my life and chatting with people. So today I'm going to share with you my must-haves for creating an offer that people really want to buy and how I set my systems up to do that selling for me. Some of these ideas might be new to you and some of them you might have heard of before. What I'd like you to focus on is what you're currently taking action on so that you can enjoy more sales with less effort as well. So creating an offer that people can't wait to buy. Tip number one is to be clear about who you are selling to and how it will change their life for the better. Is it going to save them time? Is it going to save them effort? Is it going to save them money? Is it going to make them money? Will it protect them from something or entertain them, solve a problem, make something something easier or help them feel better? This sort of outcome is way more important than the features of your program. It's all about helping somebody realize the potential they have and the outcome they can receive and the transformation that they can see happening in their future when they work with you. That's where the magic happens. So tip number two, after you've shared that outcome and who it will help, that's when you back it up with features. Now for us as creators, we feel like listing lots of features, like how many learning modules are in our program, how many activities, how many bonuses. We think that makes our offer solid and worth the money. But to the consumer, the outcome is what's worth the money. And that's why we share that first and most prominently. Too many features can actually be a turnoff. Instead of looking like incredible value for money, that long list makes your potential customer feel overwhelmed and an overwhelmed mind doesn't buy. Tip number three is to show proof that your offer works. Testimonials, Google reviews, screenshots of happy comments, before and after case studies. And if you don't have those yet, share your personal story. Offer a beta round to your mastermind. Give 10 spots away in your program in return for a review. Yes, you've probably heard that before. Have you done it? Or were you too nervous to ask people to review your product for you? Move through those nerves. And if you can't, then ask a team member or your VA to send out a pitch for you to have people participate in a beta round or a free round in exchange for a review. Tip number four is about relaxing, (laughs) relax about your pricing. We stress out so much about pricing our offers when in reality, I have seen the same information successfully sold over the years for $7 in an ebook, $500 in an online course, $2,000 in a mastermind and $10,000 in one-on-one coaching. It's how your offer is positioned that counts. 
I personally price lower for completely passive products and higher for anything that needs me as a personal touch point. So people can buy from me and learn from me at a price point that suits their needs. Some will want cheaper and self-paced and others will want more guidance and they're happy to pay for that. And that's also why I love tiered pricing, especially for my service packages. And if you include payment planned options, you'll make more sales. Will you get payment defaults and refund requests? Yep, most of us do, but I found it's a very small amount in comparison to sales figures. When you have a process for handling these, they reduce too, and then you don't find yourself as emotional about them anymore. And I reduce my defaults by offering a bonus and or a discount for people who pay in full. Tip number five is to answer objections in your sales page so that people don't have to raise them with you. Add examples of buyer blocks to your copy and then solve them as you progress down the sales page. You can overcome objections with things like case study examples, stories that you share. You can overcome objections in your FAQs. You can overcome objections in your sales emails. You already know the the most common objections. Is it worth the cost? Is there any risk if they're not happy with the purchase? How long will it take to action the learning? Are those results really possible for them? We're all familiar with these kinds of objections and you'll probably find that when you take just a few minutes to sit down pressure-free, when they're not right in front of you asking you face-to-face, you'll be able to sit down and actually work out your answer to those objections and write them down and feel a lot more confident about handling them that way. If your offer's a good one, you'll be able to answer those effectively in writing and then once they're already taken care of, you don't need to stumble through them on the spot anymore. Okay, let's talk about setting up your offers to sell themselves. You need to share your offers so much more than you're sharing them now. I guarantee you, you are not talking about your offers enough. But I understand not wanting to feel pushy or spammy. I am exactly the same. So here are my favorite ways to sell without feeling like I'm even doing the selling. Okay, the first step is to take the ick factor away by ruling out what you don't want to do. Now, for me, that's sales calls, also known as discovery calls, complimentary sessions, whatever you want to call them. These work really well for other people, but they're not for me. I stumble through them and people don't get the best version of me when I try to do sales calls. So, I turn my sales calls into pre-recorded video classes or webinars. I pretty much go through the same information I would normally do on a call and then I pop it at the top of my sales page as a free training with that sales page starting just under the video. And I learned this hybrid sales page strategy from Mariah Coz. I will leave a link in the show notes to Mariah's website and her socials because I think you're going to love her ideas. Next, I look at all the different places I could mention my offers online. Things like blog posts, not just announcing your offer and doing an article about your offer, but also adding little mentions of your offers to your regular content. So I'm talking about sales today. So of course, I'm going to be hyperlinking the word sales in my blog post to my effortless sales program sales page. You want to mention it in your social media, Captain. Captains, you want to mention it in your social media, captions. You want to put it in your bio links. You want to oh add everything to your everything page. This is a really good strategy that I picked up from Elizabeth Goddard. I will link you to her resource on it in the show notes. But an everything page is basically where you have every offer that you've ever made on one page, easy to find, and it takes one click on your website to get there. So this is freebies, low price products, mid price products, higher tier products, everything all in the one page. So that if somebody has is already familiar with you and they're like, oh, I remember that person has something about this, they don't have to hunt through your whole website to find it. They just go to your everything page, find it there and buy. So easy. Um, the resources page on my website, that's where I put my affiliate links. So if I'm using some software that I love, I'll become an affiliate product and I'll put it on my resources page on my website. So it's easy for people to find it. You can talk about your offers in your podcast show notes. You can talk about them in your YouTube video descriptions. You can put them in the PS in your weekly email, or you can do a featured section in your newsletter. There's so much available real estate for promoting your offers online. Are you really using it to its full capacity? 
capability, whatever the word is, are you using it the most that you can use it? Every little mention is a nudge towards a sale. As a consumer, I don't usually buy something the very first time I see it. It takes me a few sightings to warm up to the offer, to realize it's something I need right now, to get comfortable with the price point and how I'm going to pay for it. And if I feel this way, it's likely many others do too. So whenever I feel like I'm sharing my offers too much, I remind myself that not everyone sees my offer every time I offer it. The algorithm. They don't often open every email. They're not always on my website. Now, when they do see my offer, people need time and opportunity to get to know it. People will often look for a freebie first to test me out and see if my advice or ideas actually help them. And then they're more open to buying when they have that quick win from me. And that's why I embed upsells into my products and programs, not just on the thank you pages. People will often wait for the right time to buy, and usually that's when they've been paid or when they've saved up enough money or when they have time to action the learning. And people who do unsubscribe and who do unfollow me because I'm being too salesy, quote unquote too salesy, that's usually people who are not interested in buying from me anyway. And that's fine. They don't have to follow. They can still find me anytime they want to by heading to my website. And that's why for me, Those little nudges work really, really well. And also little funnels work really, really well. They make a big difference in my sales results. Now, you know I wasn't going to go a whole episode on simple selling without talking about funnels, right? But I'm not going to walk you through a hugely complex type of funnel. Funnels can be massive, beautiful, but very, very complicated webs. And I know that that kind of puts people off the idea of creating a funnel. I am the queen of very, very simple funnels. So I'm going to share with you my four favorites today. I love a good funnel, but I am a set and forget girl. I, I, just, I just want to set it up nice and easy, have it get to work. And I like seeing those little surprise payment notifications popping up on my phone. And that's why I think it's absolutely worth taking a little time now to set up a funnel so that I can reap the financial rewards later when I'm reading a book or when I'm at the movies. So yeah, here are my four favorite funnels and they're very, very easy. If you've never done a funnel before, you don't have to start with a complicated one. You can just choose one of these. So the first one is the super quick, no email required funnel. This is a simple sales page with a big discount on one of my passive products and a short time frame for my buyer to decide if they want to purchase and enjoy the savings. If it's normally $197, I'll drop it right down to $27 for a couple of hours. Fast action takers are rewarded with a huge discount and I've made a quick sale without any extra effort required. And I put a really big timer on this sales page so that the savings and the deadline are very clear. And when the timer expires, the page refreshes and it goes to an identical sales page. I just duplicate the original and then I take off the special price and the timer and that's it. I use lead pages for my sales pages and they have a timer in them, but you can also use deadline funnel for that. So I will leave a link in the show notes for you. Okay, funnel number two is the very simple email funnel. And this one is handy for selling products, I find, with a higher price point. I usually use this Uh, with my video and hybrid sales page strategy that I mentioned earlier. So when people sign up for my free masterclass, they get taken to the video sales page to watch the training and that has a discount and a timer on it too, but it's still sold at a higher price point. So I back it up with a series of emails. Email one delivers the video link and introduces me and my experience in the area that I'm teaching about. So people know that I actually know what I'm doing. Email two, a day or two later, reminds them to watch the video if they haven't yet. And it also lets them know that there's a limited time special offer that will help them take action on the training they get in the video and get great results. Email three, a day or two later, reminds them of that special offer window. And it also shares proof that my program works. So that's where I throw in a case study or a testimonial or some happy comments, screenshots, that kind of thing. 
And email four is my last call email. It's that last chance to buy before the discount expires. And I normally send that just a few hours before the sale ends. Nice and easy. And then after they go through that little funnel, whether they buy or not, they join my weekly email list. And if they buy, they get a little tag that says they're already a student. So if I promote that program later, it excludes them from the promos. Okay, the next funnel is the PDF slash ebook funnel. I love this one because it's a super simple one again. This is a freebie. People sign up in exchange for the email address. So they give the email address and I give the freebie. And then within the product, I have little blurbs here and there that position myself as an authority in my field. And then the very last page of the ebook. So I'll do one on, say, simple cleaning, for example, at Beautifully Organized. Um, or I think I have one on less less effort, more results for the Simpler Business podcast. But basically at the end of that freebie, I have a page that also talks about next steps. So what they can do next, they can usually coach with me one-on-one or they can enroll into a passive or a group program that I have on offer. So that's embedded into the final part of the PDF or the ebook. And it's I I deliberately put it on that page because I find with bump offers, when you're doing a bump offer right at the start, people aren't always in that no like and trust factor yet. You know, they're appealed. They love the, uh, the appeal of your first product, but they're not often ready to make that second choice, but embedded into a downloadable. I've already built their trust throughout their reading of the ebook. And then, yeah, if they're ready for a next step, it's nice and easy at that point. Okay. My last little simple funnel I'm going to tell you about today is it's not even really a funnel it's the PS email funnel it's barely a funnel at all I just make sure that there's a PS at the end of almost every email I send with an offer for one of my passive products or a product that I'm an affiliate for that links to their sales page And I usually do the same PS for a month so that people see the offer four times before I switch it up. It's really something super easy. If you're on my email list, you would have seen it a thousand times before. I think this month I was talking about my free class on how to actually simplify your course creation so you actually get it done. And then people click through and they watch that class. And then that class is a video embedded onto a hybrid sales page that enrolls them into my product. So yeah. You can see it in action if you're on my email list. So I will leave a link to join my email list in the show notes as well. There are lots of links today. Now, you can do a lot more with funnels, and I probably will add things like Facebook ads, uh, bump offers, and more complex upsells to my sales strategy later. But for the moment, these are working well. They they're easy to update just once or twice a year and otherwise they take care of themselves. So I can use my time for other things without worrying about my income stream. And the security I have from knowing these exist is amazing. The whole reason I started my online business was so that I didn't have to work 40 hours a week on somebody else's schedule anymore. And I am so glad that I made that pivot back in 2012. So what's next on the horizon for me sales-wise? Well, this year I'm going to be setting up a proper affiliate program so that my online course students and my entrepreneurial friends can get paid for recommending my courses to their audience. So let me know if you would like to be an affiliate. Okay, let's take action. It's time to do a review and audit on your offer visibility. One easy way to do this is to ask a couple of friends to check out your website and your socials and then tell you about the offers that they saw. Which freebies, ebooks, online courses, group coaching, one-on-one offers, whatever you're selling, which ones did they spot and how easy was it for them to find them? And did they feel any hesitation about buying? You don't have to take every tiny detail into heart. You don't have to take every detail too hard when you receive this feedback. After all, you're the expert in your field. Uh, But to know, you know the ins and outs of what you're doing, but to know that reaction, to have that set of fresh eyes on your offers by someone that you trust, to actually hear what people are thinking when they see it, that is invaluable information. So have a fresh look at your offers and how simple it is for people to buy them. Remember, if they have to hunt them out or do too many clicks to get to the purchase page, they're not going to buy. So make it a simple and positive experience for them and then enjoy those sales flowing in.
I hope you found this episode helpful. If you'd like to chat more about sales, you can check out my effortless sales program. I will link it in the show notes or you can come and find me on Instagram and we will chat about sales there. And I'll see you in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Simpler Business Podcast. If you did, please subscribe, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. There's a link in the show notes to make it nice and easy for you, just the way we like it. If you're ready to simplify and scale your business, you can get started with my free audio class at marissaroberts.com. See you next time.